Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and I am Daka who's a level 4 fighter with crossbow expert sharpshooter shooting all the bad guys. Pew pew. That's it. <laughs> Hello everybody, I am Elliot the Nom, a level 4 rock gnome cleric of the life domain. My faith in my deity is shaken, my faith in myself is shaken, and my time with the party may soon be at an end. I am Daedalquist, playing Florglesnarp, uh, a goblin sorcerer. I am uh, not shaken, I am just to, disturbed. Uh, find out more about these boobies. And I am Dimmy G, uh, also Dimitriov, the Axeman, the, the Wanderer. Um, <clears throat> I've got myself a little charge in uh, Elon, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to sort this rowdy bunch out, but you know, they're causing havoc. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. So, we find ourselves yet again in the catacombs, this time level three. Um, last week, as we remember, Data left a poor, unfortunate soul in a, in a wooden box. Uh, it didn't, didn't feel like rescuing him. You guys took on several more cultists, including one of the major priests. And, uh, I mean, there, there's really nothing... Oh, we did find out that little Jimmy will be joining a monastery, uh, possibly, at the end of last episode for uh, attempted thievery back in Victa. And will the party make it there in time to save him from the priesthood? Quite literally. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, take it away. So at the end of the last episode, like I said, we just finished up the battle. You had, coming out of this room, were um, three or four cultists... Um, in this room back here um, was the individual that Daedalquist uh, was speaking to and was requesting to get out of a box, just so you remember that. And then you've got several doors back in the uh, hallway before you that you still have yet to open. Um, do not forget that you did have one cultist that uh, Jimmy capped one and right into his chest who did run down this hallway and escaped. Mm. So all the other ones that you know of were, were dispatched, but one did escape from your, uh, from your purview. Right. So, guys, should we just go and hunt this guy down? Should we, like, you know, rescue this fella later, loot all the things later? Should we just, should we just track? There, there, this there, are, there are an open doors in the room behind us. I, I suspect that there are more prisoners in there. Uh, I, I do not feel comfortable leaving our backs exposed, though. So I would like to examine those rooms before we move on. I agree. We should consolidate our position. So you hear Dimitri again coming out of this room. You hear you hear another call. Hey, get me out of here! Get me the hell out of here! I don't. I don't now that the combat either. has kind of calmed down, right? There's no more sounds of the din of battle is gone. You guys are calming down a little bit. The the individual back here, the Dado was talking to a very familiar voice. Voice, of course. I don't really care about him, Dimitriov. Do you want to uh, do you want to push on and get this guy, or do you want to consolidate? Uh, I think we should consolidate. To be honest, I'm. Uh, I think I just I I, don't, I would dread to think there's something in one of these rooms behind us. So I don't want to get ambushed. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I wander over to the guy in the cage. Oh, it's it's paused. It's paused. Yep. One sec. <laughs> there you go. Yep, so you just to remind you, all the doors on the right-hand side, our screen right, have all been opened by Daedal. Um, all the ones on the left are still closed. Are they, like, full doors, like, um, like you can't see through them, like, are they all just, like, solid? Yeah, correct. They're, they're, they're large. There's, there's um, uh, wood doors that are strapped with steel. They're, you know, again, very solid construction, does not match what's above you. You know, as you've descended down into this level, this seems to be a much more constructed location if that's the best way to put it mm. as so, opposed to carve out of the earth okay. so elliot you walk into this room and you see you see an, uh, a middle-aged gentleman in green robes um and he's staring at you and, you know eyes big just get me out of here where's the other guy how come you guys aren't getting me out of here what's going on and i mean he's he's not loud but he's loud right i mean you can hear it echoing a little bit i want to make myself over there as, as well and get him to quiet down Calm, so, Ellie, what's uh, what's go what's on your mind here? What are you? What's going on? Uh, you know, be 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 calm, friend. We will we will free you. 
Yeah, was, I need to call them. Are you crazy? These friggin' cultists, whatever the flip they are, they're killing everybody, man. Get me the hell out of here. I tell him to shut up. <laughs> be quiet. Be to nice, not attract Vlogel more. Stop. Okay, when, when you kind of bring him back into the into the where he is, he does. He, he kind of his his breathing is very heavy, right? His, you know, he he knows that that he knows you guys aren't part of this of these red red robed individuals. That you're you're a whole new faction, whatever you may be. Um, and he sees his chance and he's up, but he's gonna he starts to calm down a little. His breathing is very very labored. He's very excited. Um. Does anybody have a key? No, I've told him I can open the, open oh, the you, cage for him, but... You um, can? Oh, well, let's do that then. Well, the, I, the, the the cage is locked. Remember, Dato, you couldn't... You There was no way for you to, like, open it without either picking a lock or... Yeah. Dimitriev kind of comes to mind, right? He, he could flip his, um, his wood axe backward and use it as a makeshift sledge, possibly. Um... It is a wooden cage. You could have him move back to the corner. Dimmy could probably knock it down. Uh, noise, of course, in both cases. Yeah, but I mean, I could pick the lock, right? But um, you could try definitely. He, he, he uh, I'm, I'm telling Elliot, he hasn't answered any questions. He just keeps like, and he, he's very like not helpful. Uh, the guy's in a prison. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let, let's free he, him. <laughs> he do, he doesn't answer basic question as to like who's here with him, uh, why he's here at all, or why he won't help us, like, take care of the cultists that put him here in the first place. <laughs> well, I, you know, he's probably quite distressed. We can, but... Like, so, some people that are imprisoned are rightfully imprisoned, right? <laughs> I mean, these are, these are cultists who are worshipping worms and <laughs> murdering I'm people. Dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Safe to say, I'm, that... I'm, I'm doubting. No, I'm, it's not safe to say, right? Yeah, Trini could be some kind of wizard. I'm He's got green robes. He could He's be like a wizard. He's legitimately imprisoned, but. He hasn't even tried to make a case for why he's supposed to be released. Like, <laughs> why he's been in prison. Like, he hasn't been in in the slightest forthcoming. But All we, he's doing is yelling, attracting more cultists here. We, we, for a start, I think the sound is kind of neither here nor there. They, they know we're here, right? You know, the, there's one run off already. You know, I, I think the, the sound is kind of not so relevant at this point. And also, we know that in the past, when, you know, bad things were happening here before, many travelers and, you know, caravan members went missing. You know, I would assume that this is just another case of somebody being abducted and, you know, fed to worms or something. You would assume. Okay, so are you, are you, you gentlemen, would... just so I understand, are you gentlemen kind of having this conversation in front of him or is this kind of out of character? No, this is right in front of him. We're yeah, okay. right in front of him. Oh, so he kind of looks at you and goes, are you really having a discussion about this? Let me out of this damn cage. I mean, no, I need to get back to my to family. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You're not even trying to be honest or open. Do I am you not think... helping you. Until For one we... second, green one, that I am part of this whole thing? Get me out of this box. But you haven't explained why you're in the box. <laughs> and you haven't given me any reason to let you out. <laughs> I tried to at give this you a reason point, to let you out. Is just he's laughing. starting to get very visibly <laughs> flustered <at> again. <laughs> he, he goes, and he, and he backs up, and he, he looks at his hands, and he goes... <laughs> like, pointing at the cage, like the lock on it, right? <laughs> Dimitriov, can your axe be of use here? <laughs> No, 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 hold on, hold on. What do you mean, hold on? What What do you mean, hold on? Just answer why you're in the cage. Simple question, one sentence, go. They put me here. Why? That's not, that's, that's a how, not a why. I don't fucking know, green one. <laughs> well, My what are you doing? Who are you? I'm sitting here in a fucking box. Yeah, that's not. Is, is there somebody loud. else in charge of you guys? Somebody, woodsman, let me out of this box, please. No, 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 no. Go examine the other rooms. I'll take care of this one. <laughs> my, my, my friend. Uh, although my uh, paranoid companion, uh, you know, is, see, you know, seems to be a, on a bit of a sticking point here. So, <laughs> although you know, I'm all for letting you out. Um, where where were you traveling to? Where where were you when when you first encountered these devils? I hail from Victor. I was headed to Full Point. I was on my way home back to Victor. We were waylaid. 
along the way. Small caravan. How, 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 how we? How, yeah, yes, how, you how, asked how, when you were in here earlier. You asked how many of us, and I said seven or eight of us may have survived. I wasn't sure. No, I mean this. Said, yeah, I'm sorry. Go no, on. No, no, go, go, on, Dale, go, on, Dale. I mean, you said that there were others. Where are the others, and why are you in this cage? Like, who are you? Do you see the what? door, little green one? Yes. When they closed it, I could not see where they put the others. Please, seven Woodsman, of you were Woodsman, captured. Woodsman, please let me out of the box. Please let me out of the box. In time. All I'll in let time, you out friend. when uh, the goblin tells me to let you out. Okay, he's really, he's visibly like, <laughs> now he's just, he's going to start, he backs up into a corner and he just shuts his mouth. What's I mean, he's just, his, his fucking arms are up. He's, he's sweating like a stuck pig from stress. He's just, he's pissed. He's, he's livid at this point. He just shuts up in the corner. All right. We'll come back when you're more talkative. But is this not why we are here? You know, is this not why we came to this place in the, yeah, let's examine in the, the first other rooms instance? Let's see why they're in, like, if his oh, friends yeah. are here and if they're more compliant. Well, c compli give him, just give him a few minutes to calm down. I, I, if I were him, I would be very uncalm in his situation. To be quite perfectly what's honest, gonna happen, what's going to happen to him in this cage? Currently, he's the, the as safe right. as he can be. At this point, at this point, Dak is going to walk up, and he's like, "We, we, you, we, you put on trial, sir." By who? Exactly. So you're not guilty of any crime. Therefore. You should be released, <laughs> and then Daco will just Daco will just know. smash, smash at the yes. lock like an idiot. <laughs> oh all right, give God, me give me a, give me a strength check, Daka. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, had okay. See, look, this really is a this really is a intelligence eight. As I couldn't find that. Okay, so what are you hitting at it with? Um, I've I've got a rapier, I think, uh, or I've got a scimitar. One of my many scimitars. <laughs> use the hilt okay, of the so scimitar. Butt, you're, you're butt ending it, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. The you 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 knock it five, six, seven, eight times. Nothing really. The the cage is relatively sturdy, right? It's well built. Mm -hmm. Um, the 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 wood the shafts of wood utilized in the cage are, you know, six inches, seven inches thick. I mean, they're big. This is made to handle all manner of sizes of individuals. They, it doesn't seem like it's been made for something specific other than usage for, for, for um, um, you know, storage of an individual. But everything from a couple of men to, you know, a half a dozen gnomes could fit inside this cage. <laughs> um, that sounds pretty okay. rowdy. So, yeah, so obviously Doug has, Doug has completely failed. <laughs> Thank you for that interruption, Naka. Now, young he looks man at you, in Naka, green goes, robes. Thank you, Gray, for at least trying. Now, if you could get the woodsman to help out, I could easily be out of this. For at least give me. I don't want to die in a cage. You're not gonna die. We're here Demetrio, to protect you. Demetrio, Demetrio, do you your, think your, your axe profession? could, uh, could bust your actual, this guy out? What's your actual profession? What are you doing in here? What, what does any of that matter? I'm a farmer. What does any of this? It matters because Demetrio. you asked if I'm on trial. Demetrio. Were you discussing it amongst when yourselves? You, when you're let a... out. Dimitriov, can you can you can you think you can get this guy free with your axe? So are we are we like three to one on letting him out? I'll let we you should let definitely him let him out. I, yeah, I, I go there. outside and I'm, let you let him out. I'm and gonna I sigh. I'm gonna crack over here. Crack the cage open. Okay, so a um, couple of swift, swift knocks. I mean, you know, big side swings, big uppercuts. The rest of the party kind of moves back. And instead of focusing on the lock, you focus on all the woodwork around the, the latch, the lock, right? And you're able to knock the door open. And, um, and the individual, a, a deep sigh of relief as he just emerges. And he, immediately you can see he kind of stands up just a little bit straighter, like, okay, the, the first hurdle of, of, of freedom is now behind me and he looks at you and he says 
Thank you, Woodsman. Thank you for finally coming to your senses. How the hell do I get out of here? Mm. Uh, that's a good question. So it is a good question because it's pitch black, isn't it? Yes. I would Fish recommend would several. If you please, and he looks at you directly, Dimitriov, in the eye, puts his hand, puts one hand on your shoulder. If you find any of my compatriots, just let them out. <laughs> okay, I can do that. Um, I mean, do you, do you want it? Like, is there a chance that they'll be in these other rooms? Because you've got more chance of surviving together if, if we find any of you. I have no clue where they've been held. I was alone in my cage. There was another cage in my area. But they have, they've got to have us. If they didn't kill everyone else, then they've got to have us somewhere. Yeah, well, look. There's a, there's other cages, right? There's other cages in the room. So should we clear these these other three rooms? And then oh, ready in be, action as I open this door. There might be. Okay, uh, what's that action? Well, what's uh, this? To, wait I, a I second. Take, wait a second. I take out my daggers. Uh, <laughs> me. Wait and a second. I see someone when I open the door. This I'm ready how, to stop them. This isn't how you clear rooms, Diddle. <laughs> it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> oh, man, here we go. I can stand no, here and I can move your shots. You were missing me when I was moving here, Daka. You're not this close to me. No, I'm saying I you can wait. You can I wait know, until so you're so here. Here's the, here's the thing. Hold on, Daka. You lunatic. <laughs> you would have been back in the room with Daedal or – I'm sorry, back in the room with Dimitrov or near it. Dadel did move off while you guys were letting yeah. him off, so he is there. Is if he wants to open this door by himself? Yeah, he can. Yeah, I'm just telling him what he should have done. <laughs> but okay. Okay. So, are you? So, what do you do with Dadel? Tell me again. I'm uh, tearing open the door, uh, preparing an action, readying an action with my dagger out to stab anyone um, that looks like that that has cultist robes on them. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So, go ahead and open the door. Okay, so you pop the door, and inside you see you find another box, and now in this one is another middle-aged gentleman again, this time in some bluish type robes. Okay, I move forward to the cage. He, now, so he when you open the door, he he kind of rubs his eyes a little bit as the torchlight kind of peeks in, right? Like because he's been in the dark as well, and he he immediately stands, and you know he it, it, he's he, you could tell he was watching the door because he could hear the din he could hear the sound outside he didn't know what the hell was going on yeah. and then in emerges this you know three foot green goblin with two daggers pulled <laughs> and and that's the first thing that he literally sees beyond the door he can obviously see kind of the rest of the party and he sees the other one uh, is that, I put... is it Thomas Thomas is that you you're friends with man in green and then the green man, um, kind of the Thomas now, runs over towards... Now, these bodies aren't here. These bodies are still strewn about up in this area. Mm. Runs over to the door. Jame. Jame, are you alive? And they, they obviously recognize each other. Thomas enters the room. Jame, right, Jame immediately, again, his shoulders kind of drop. His, he, he, he gets, his, his breathing slows down a little bit. He then begins to recognize that this may be their their chance at freedom. All right, you stay there, man in green, <laughs> man in blue. He he looks What's... at you and goes, Thomas, you little. What, He's what pissed you... at you, dude. He is just. I mean, he he gives you no regard. <laughs> why are you in here? Why why did they capture you? Thomas, get me out of here! Open this <laughs> damn lock. He oh, just looks, he's, he looks right too. past you. It's, it's shit, almost like you you're not idiots. even there because he sees his buddy. Holy shit, you guys are idiots. And then I walk off. <laughs> Thomas looks back. Woodsman, Woodsman, this is my, this is one of my men. Will you open the cage for him as well? Woodsman. Yeah, the cage to be I tough. will open the cage. I will open the cage. Okay, so another couple of quick three, four, five swift swings right around the lock again. You're smart enough to know not to go after the lock. And um, and James is, is then released as well. Thomas, Thomas, there was another one with me. There was another one with me, and they took him. They took him. Well, let's get him out. I'm, I'm assuming he's in this room down here. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I think there might be other places where he might be. Well, Ooh. let's... Uh... Should, should we, like, clear this room properly? <laughs> like, with one person opening the door and two people or three people with ready actions rather than 
you know i'm i'm sulking and i've got my daggers out and i don't trust the two idiots i'm sulking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they wouldn't talk to me <laughs> no they're idiots like they're literal idiots and i'm i'm frustrated and i got my daggers out standing in this doorway okay do you want to uh do you want to open the door dimitri uh yes i will open the door i collided with a wall <laughs> there we go okay That's so fine. you open the door and again two more cages inside again that the same type of a very similar dimensions um what they served as before, you're not really sure, right? Could these have been sleeping rooms? Could these have been storage rooms at one time? Um, but obviously, it is plain to the eye what they serve as now, right? This is These are all storage locations for the unfortunate individuals who have passed before you one and two levels, or I'm sorry, two levels above you. Mm. Right. Last one, then. Let's do it. Nothing in here either. Mm. Okay, again, uh, another empty cage. Um, some busted up, uh, some busted up crates. Um, some hay bales. There's blood on the floor. This one, there's blood on the floor right outside the box. There was obviously some type of an altercation. Perhaps somebody decided to fight back as opposed to being taken to whatever it was, but there is no, there are no human remains or no anything remains in this room to be found other than the blood, blood stains and splatters. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. All right, things are away from those two survivors. Um, I shall no, see. no, 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 they're not coming out. I'm standing in the doorway with my daggers out. They can just Sorry. step over you. <laughs> yeah, they're just... They're kind of they're they're trying to stay within the light, right? The if, minute the torchlight kind of moves, try. if they try, I'm gonna actually like. Uh... Yeah, you can you can be following. I mean, Thomas has always got his eye on you, anyway, dude. He's like he's like as as he moves past you, he's he's watching you. He he freely turns his back to Dimitriov and Elliot and Daka and um, and Elon, but he's he's keeping a big eye on you. But they are trying to stay within the torchlight. Now that there's a light source, they're like, you know, it's, was, it's, I wanted to move them back because, like, I want to take action if they try to go through the doorway. Okay, so what was your action? <laughs> I'm standing there with my daggers out, and I want them to stay in in the uh, in the room. Okay, so they're just going to move past you unless you say something or do something. Yeah, they they want this not light going out without uh, explaining yourself. And then Dade, I, flag or I, stop. Cast, I cast an illusion. What more do you want them to explain? <laughs> they haven't said fucking anything. They're farmers on a trip on a, in a caravan traveling from some place I forgot to Victor, and they were they taken by the coldest. Point, Elliot, full it's point, Elliot. Full, full point. That's, what, I that's that. what they barely said after, like, you basically put the words in their mouths. Like, <sighs> no. No, I'm not God. trusting them. This is outrageous. It's pretty outrageous. We, we need to talk to them as well because it's well, it's clear to me that the compatriot is, and I'm saying this quietly to the others. You know, it's it's clear to me that their compatriot is, uh, you know, worm food right now. Yeah, probably it's dead. Yeah. That's, that's what I was going to say when they weren't there. Yeah, it looks like it looks like they made shit out of luck, doesn't it? So um, we could. We could ask them if they want to stay around until, like, you know, because they, they, they might not be dead, right? They might be, they might have moved them up because we, there's all this we haven't explored. So, like, there, there might be, they might be survived, there might be more survivors down here. So, how fresh possible. is the blood? How fresh is the blood? Yeah, oh, yeah, how fresh is the blood? It's, it's similar to upstairs, right? There's, it's blood. It's, it's not, it's not bone dry. There are some still, you know, oh, so it's fresh. How fresh yeah, is the it, body? <laughs> it's it's not as if it fell yesterday, but you know it's it's not it's not dark and coppery and coagulated and well, you that, know it's it's that spurs me into action as as a uh, a man of uh, military background, having an, analyzed the blood. I've realized that we have to move now, and mm. we have to we have to if there's any chance that these guys are still here, and we need to get them now. Yeah. Yep, very fair, very fair uh, thought, right? There's, I mean, you found two survivors of, 
maybe not. Maybe they're they're evil, uh, you know, gods in disguise who are waiting to kill all the goblins in the party. But <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you found um, what you believe to be two survivors. Um, you know, one of the things, don't forget guys, one of the things you can kind of do is, you know, one of you could, could look to try to get an insight check on these individuals. Are they telling the truth? Do you feel like they're trying to deceive you? Things like that. That is always an option my, my in insight, situations like this. My insight tells you they're not trying to deceive us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My insight too. tells me they're idiots. So that's <laughs> what I'm asking on. But I, I, I agree with Dimitriov. We should move. There we might be a chance we can save yeah. those there. Yeah. I, I go over to the to the two as they are altercating with Daedal, with Flagosnarp in the doorway and say, my friends, you know, I, I recommend you stay with us. It's probably the safest place to be right now. Your compatriot isn't here. Maybe they've been taken deeper into this dungeon. We're going to try and find them. And then James looks over at Thomas and James says, Thomas, there were three others with me. There were three others. I think there were only five of us who survived. And Thomas you, says, oh, you, and Thomas looks at Jamin and said, God, I was hoping that there were seven or eight of us. Are you sure? He says, they killed the others on the roadside. They died. Are you prepared to fight? We're farmers, little one. I mean, he <laughs> just, he, and he looks immediately over at, at, at Jamin and he says, just ignore him. We've got to. We've got to find our way out of here. This is. How do you can... expect to get out if you meet someone and you're not even prepared to fight? You're fucking idiots. And then I walk off again. <laughs> I, I kind of hold it for sort of a conciliatory hand and say, you know, it's okay. We're prepared to fight. You know, just take care of yourselves. You know, stay out of trouble. Stay at the back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we're we not might... going. You you want us to go deeper into this place? Well, well, we might find your friends. That's the thing, right? Like if they're alive, we we will find them, right? So it's we up are to not you. fighters. We don't. We don't. Yeah, we're, I think we're it's simple to, men. It's up to you if you want to try and find your way out. It's yeah, like, yeah, I mean, but it's dark and so it's so they easy, they right? kind of look at each other, right? And then they look back at the cages and they kind of they peer around and how is it hard to get out? How we were blindfolded, we were masked, we were hooded. It's it is dark and the away. cave is full yeah. of cultists. You know, we don't know, mm. there might still be some back there. Yeah. The giant leave us, rats. leave us, leave us. <laughs> and he looks, he looks immediately at, at, at Dimitriov, right? Because Dimitriov is the one who let him out. Leave us torches. We'll, we'll, we'll barricade ourselves in one of these rooms. If we can't find our way, we, are, we, we would just be holding you back if we followed you in deeper. Promise but, us, promise us, Woodsman, you will come back for us. I promise we'll come back for you. Wait a minute. So now you want to go back into the fucking cage? <laughs> Not in the cage, into the room. <laughs> Holy shit, you're... <laughs> They, can we put Flagel Snap in the cage? <laughs> Physics, this is all homebrew, brother. This is all homebrew. So, um, so yeah, so they look at you and they say, leave us with, with a few to Do you have any rations? Do you have any water? It's been days since I've eaten or drank anything. Yes, of course. Mm. I have these rations. Wait, so you're it, giving them your rations now. They're not yes. the least bit helpful. They're stubborn and dumb, and they want to stay right, back here Flaggle, to maybe Flaggle. get killed. And you want to give them your rations. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know where... Like, what is it that you have an issue with? Like, we are here you to save people. You don't know if they're going to follow us and kill us. That's They're not. True. Like, why would the cultists put them in a cage if they're going to follow us and kill us? Like, they would just leave them loose to fight us. Like, why would... Maybe they, they have had altercations with the cultists because they and are if actually... The enemy of my enemy them. is my friend, right? So you, at this point, yeah. Thomas, always, Thomas literally looks down at Flargal Snarp and is like, is he serious? <laughs> he is, sadly. Yes, I apologize. <laughs> Don't worry. Have the torch. Have the rations. We're going to try and save your friends. Yeah. Okay, so they said, so um, what they do is they, 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 they move back into this room. You hear them shut the door behind them, 
and then they grab as many of the barrels and things, whatever they can put up against. It. Even though the barrels are like not the greatest, they're grabbing anything. You can hear them trying to drag the cage across the floor. They're just they're 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 putting everything they can up against that door. I sigh loudly. <laughs> oh my god. I glance I glance at Flagle and say we have to move quickly. We have to move now. Like yeah, time is of time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. Clearly beyond saving. It's okay. You can it's see okay. why I would have left him yeah. in the cage, don't you now? <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just relax, relax, and let's get moving. Like we need you in a clear headspace for the task at hand, brother. Let's look in here. This is just a room. Okay, so um, I'm assuming that means you're heading up into this area because you're all moving that way. Yep. Uh, yep. I okay, agree. so let's back up real quick. So this this hallway out here extends approximately a hundred feet left and a hundred feet right. You're starting to see very symmetrical design. It's, it starts to stick out in your heads, right? You came down the central hallway. You had three even rooms on both sides, approximately the same size. We're starting to see a more symmetrical location. This is def. I mean, if the if the carving of the stones didn't tell you enough, and the and the and the and the doors, this is definitely a a an individual made structure, man made, goblin made, dwarf made, whatever. Super interesting. There's some books on the floor, but I mean, we're not going to yep, read so them. So you right? enter into into what looks to be another makeshift temple, right? Um, immediately, um, Elliot, you, you your eyes go straight to the floor, right? Because your your time in these catacombs has taught you that if you see scenes like this, there should be some type of, of, of bloody... And there's nothing on the ground other than the blood that you see here that's spread everywhere. Um, and again, another human cut in half, legs sprawled across the ground, uh, a, a skull of some type of human on top of here, several of these these candles sitting. So no markings? No markings on the floor, not like up in the, in the temples above. I'm sorry, up in the catacombs above. Can I go over and, and look at the pages of the book without touching it? The, the open book. <laughs> Yep, so again, a, a lot of cryptic symbols, but you're seeing symbols that look very similar to the symbols you etched on the ground when you were when you were copying those symbols from before. Also symbols um, that you found on the on the different ripped pages on some of the cultist priests from earlier above. I, However, I, this is a bound book. Ba okay, ba ba like physically bound. Bound, yeah, like a like a book. It's got like yeah. a spine and and a cover, so and like it's a book. Not like a magic binding. No, 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 not not like yeah, not not like anything physical or magical. No. So I I I, I take the book then and the okay. other books. I take as many just, books just, as I just can. Just note again. We'll just call it cult. This book. Note that on your sheet, if you would. Your um, right. your journal there. Right. Well, let's let's go and follow this guy here. Eh? Mm -hmm. I agree. Do you want to uh, do you want to lead the way, um, Flagel, or should we just go with the uh, torch guy? I think he has a name, Daka. Elon. Name, Elon. Daka. Elon. 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 Or we could. Oh, Diddle's gone. Like, I still think Flagel scouting is the best. Oh, man, look how fast Daka moves, man. 55 yeah, feet in a matter of seconds he's there. Fist, he's fist. He's fast, man. He's fast. They'll be able to see him around the corner, won't they, with this torch? They'll be able to see. Okay, so what's the plan? Are we literally just walking around the corner here? or? I think I think it's better. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think it's better to use the night sight, right? To use to use the night sight of either Flagel or Eliod to to try and get the uh, drop on people. I think that's yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so Flagel, give me a uh, give me your um, your check again. Stealth check. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's all be stealthy people from now. <laughs> Stealth mode. Stealthy. Yeah, then everybody else by uh, give me a stealth check as well, just so I know how how soft you're being around the tunnels. You say Ellie everyone. 
You say everyone. Stealth. Yes, please. Oh, Daka, look at this. Oh, Let's hope Dimitriev doesn't fuck it all up. <laughs> did you see? Did you see how I just rolled in that game of Blood Bowl? Holy <laughs> yeah, I just saw it now here too. <laughs> Holy moly! Okay, so um, Flargo Snarp, so you get around this corner here, right? You peek around this corner slowly. Um, you take a little bit of a wider berth, right? So you're not like coming right around the corner where somebody might, you know, be aiming at if there's anybody. You kind of back off and then look around the corner slowly. And you see to your left about 10 feet up is another door. And again, the hallway just continues off into the darkness ahead of you. Um, I relay this information to... I, I reach out... Um, to uh, to try and find Daka's mind. Ooh. So Daka, <laughs> so Daka, the, so the, does the, Daka. The, tele the teletypist has sent you a message. <laughs> now this oh, is god. the first time that you've experienced the yeah. goblin invading your mind. Oh god, it'd be crazy, wouldn't it? I mean, I... so now, um, Dado, you notice. I'm sorry, Flargo, you notice immediately. This is not the same kind of connection that you have with Elliot. Yeah. Remember how Elliot could kind of you could you could feel a little bit of the feelings in there. You could feel a response. Yeah. You could, for him, it's literally you know you're pinging him and you know it's a straight message to him, but you can hear literally nothing back. It's it's just a blank <laughs> blank return, if you will. That, that is definitely Daka's mind. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the troll sound, the troll sound in Blood Bowl Two is definitely is definitely Daka's mind. That's all you get. <laughs> so yeah, so oh, all right. So what what are we doing then at that point, gentlemen? So I guess Daka's like just like fucking crazy. Like you know, this voice in his head is like, whoa! It's going to take a bit of time to like get used to the idea of this goblin invading his mind. But uh, you know, well, and, and initially you have you kind of have no clue who it is mm -hmm. um it's it's a message but the minute that he says there's a i mean you you deduce immediately who it is right mm. but it's so foreign you don't even think goblin you're just like i mean all of a sudden it's like there's this message and then instantly you go shit that's florigal man what what powers has he unlocked what other powers might he have mm. that's scary scary stuff yeah it's very uncomfortable yeah so uh so yeah obviously after after getting Mind fucked by my <laughs> title. <laughs> Be like, Bleh. and then like, well, right. There's a room. There's a room, lads. Let's go and clear it. I I try to relay as well to um, to Daka um, that when I did this with Elliot, he was able to focus his thoughts and try to sort of communicate back to me. <clears throat> Can you try and do that for me, Daka, please? <laughs> Bonet. <laughs> Which way did he go, George? <laughs> yeah, then I tell him that I'm moving up further in the tunnel. Okay, so you move 15 feet up there. You're right outside the door. Again, it's pitch black ahead of you out of vision but you sense no movement whatsoever ahead of you. Right. Then I hear any sound coming from inside the door. Give me a perception check, please. Perception. I need to get better at that. You <laughs> hear nothing. Yep. Well, it's just a straight D20 roll for you. Yeah, you just tap, I mean... Once again, Dale, uh, Flargo continues his, his amazing dice rolling abilities. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, right, so if this door's open, it's probably best to like have um, like No, the door is definitely not open, is that what you're asking? No, 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 like when it's open, right? It should be it okay. should be Dimitriov opening it, right, with, with Flargo and Elliot behind and me adjacent so I can shoot and those two can uh did you see, did you see Dimitriev roll his eyes there when you said definitely he should open the door? He should definitely tell, open the door. I tell Jimmy or Daka that I heard nothing from inside the door. Yeah. Well, so Dimitriev, Elliot, what are you doing at this point here? Um, I'm waiting for a signal from one of you guys to come to the door. 
You know, I'm just waiting close behind Elod and Daka. Come here. Yeah. I'm. Did, did you did you not tell them to come up? Yeah, That's I did. I said I, I said that I said there's a room. Let's go and clear it. I said there's a room. All right. Let's okay. The corner. All right. Let's go All right. And clear it. Move move aside, Flargo. Whisper. Yeah, whisper. Aside. Whisper. Move aside, Flargo. <laughs> I move aside. <laughs> All right, are we like, ready? Are you guys all gonna stack on top of each other? I'm gonna, I'm gonna count, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you count? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he counted. Then he kicked the door in. I'm gonna count, count okay? And then the door flies open. <laughs> With fingers, like fingers, like. Oh, okay. <laughs> stealthy. Yeah, stealthy. I don't know why I did it like that either, because it's really hard to like put those two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you, oh, you open the door and you see another very small chamber right little <laughs> antechamber of some kind and there's a dead and bloodied guard on the ground obviously from some type of uh some area of whether victor or full point or it's not a cultist unless they dress in some new kind of garb that you haven't seen <laughs> yet right, i'm gonna search the body Yeah. I'm sorry, say again? Search the body. Yeah, so on his body you see that you see the um the symbol of Victor, right? The bowl that we saw before. Um with the giant ball sack. So the bowl, the red shield with the you don't remember that, Dimmy? I'll show it to you guys again sometime. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> so um but you don't find anything really on him, right? There's no weapons. He's got all of his clothing. His pockets have obviously been rifled to of rifled through for some reason, and he's just been left here. He's not fresh. He's in fact he's it's 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 starting to rot a little bit. It's almost like he was thrown in here and forgotten. Whether he died of natural causes or from bleed out of a couple of wounds that he has across his body. Natural causes meaning starvation and or lack of water. Um but it's almost like he was just tossed in here and forgotten. So so do Faps and Finch's other men or Elon or anybody have, have the symbol of Victor on them? No, they do not. They carry the the symbols of um, of uh, uh, the Tillich, the Tillich family from Full Point. So this is some separate guy. How did he end up here? Did did Kalon send him, or or was he just here by chance? Or like, what? How did he end up here? I wonder. Doesn't matter now. Elliot. Yeah, that's, I'm, we have I'm to, assuming we have you're to not asking on. me, right? No, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are just having a conversation. What yeah. the hell's going on? Yeah. I, I to turn to on. the norm and say, "Time is of the essence. Priorities. Uh, we yeah. we need to press on. We Let's we push. there's no there's no saving this one. Yep. Lead the way. He's dead. Go Let go me know if his condition changes. <laughs> <laughs> Are we waiting for Fargo? Yep. Yeah, I'm just, I just need to grab more of water. We can go up to about here, can't we? Okay, so if you're moving ahead of him, Jim, I'm going to I'm gonna make you... You're in front of him. Okay, well, I mean, only because he's not here. <laughs> oh, no, I'm moving him for you. Okay. Okay, so he moves up again, and... Through his vision, he can see that the tunnel makes a 90-degree turn to the left about 60, eh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, about 50 feet ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I see no other doors or anything like that. No, no other doors, nothing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a plain hallway. All right. Keep moving forward. So I guess we, we we should wait now, right? Because that we don't light that up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm going to assume we're going to assume that 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 again for role play's sake, um, Dmitriov and and um, Elon are communicating non-verbally. Elon is smart enough to know to keep the torchlight back a little bit further. It's you know the torchlight in a very dark cavern. Even though torchlight only extends <laughs> sixty feet, let's or yeah, sixty feet. Let's be on or thirty feet. Let's be honest. You're still in a very dark cavern, right? It's like that star on the on the on the darkest of nights. It still offers some light, no matter what you do. Yeah. But as uh, as Elliot has mentioned, they know you're here. <laughs> yeah. True. True. <laughs> um, I'm assuming my persuasion or um, perception check is uh, still active. That I'm uh... not your perception, no, because you use that on the door. You were using that as like a listen. That type All of right. thing. 
So I carefully move around this corner, uh, expecting to see someone when I move around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Feel free to so, move up right around the corner there. I'm a little bit more ready than usual. So again, about 10 feet up, another door to the left. And then ahead of you, you see that the room kind of opens up a little bit. Yeah. And there's so some columns, some large, and I mean, they're, they're five foot by five foot beast columns, beautiful carved columns. No real symbols on them, just highly decorative columns straight up, different, um, different shapes going up, but nothing, nothing descript. Um, some straight, sh you know, shafts, a couple of boxes, some circles carved in them. Very beautiful. And they're all identical, the ones that you can see at least. Mm. So I relay this to Daka <clears throat> and the fact that there are two doorways to our left in this hallway, but I can't see anyone. Mm. I just realized I forgot to put the music on, but never mind. Um, right, so shall we, shall we clear that room then? Like I obviously really. Okay, so the um, Dadle, Dadle, I'm sorry, Flargle um, approaches the door, presumably in a quiet manner, right? From yeah, from yeah. what he's 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 assuming he's he's doing a great job of that. Um, are you guys going to come up around the corner? Or what are you guys doing? Yeah, let, let's go. Let's go. All right, feel free to position yourselves as you would. Um, Dimitrov, where do you want Elon at this point? Then, uh, I would Give me like. A ping. Uh, how do I? Oh my god! I hold left. There we go. In front of in front of the nom. I want I want him to protect the nom. <laughs> there goes Elliot all the way back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let me let me come here and then wherever Elliot goes. Oh, I want him one step in front of the nom. Yep. So okay. So is that where you want him then? Right there. I just want him to protect the nom. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Where did um, where did Daka go? He seems to have disappeared. There he is. Okay. So what are, what's our plan at this doorway, gentlemen? Ready actions. Yep. Yep. Ready to and shoot. And those are obviously if something something emerges that's relatively cultist like in nature. Swing away Correct. or shoot away. Correct. Okay. And uh, are you opening the door then, um, Flargle? Um, isn't Dimmy? Yeah, I I'm, well, Dimmy's not in a position right now. Can I? Uh, uh, then I'll do it. Hold on. Let's see what Ellie wants to do as well. You could mage hand the door. You could yeah, mage yeah, hand yeah. the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I? Uh, can I cast uh, cast mage hand? Yeah. Mm. Now that's that's a free spell based on your abilities. But how many times can you do that a day? It, it's just a cantrip. Uh, I don't know. But uh, isn't that that's the one that came though with your with your ability? No, that's the mind push, right? Or wait, am I getting confused? No, Mage Hand was a part of that as well. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, and you can uh, use it unlimited, I think. So under Telekinetic, as a bonus action, you can shove one creature. You learn, you learn the Mage Hand cantrip. You can cast it without verbal or somatic. So you can do this totally unbeknownst to anybody, Elliot. And you can make a Spectral Hand invisible. If you already know this spell, its range increases. Its spellcasting ability... Okay, so it's just it's it's unlimited. So go for it. Sick, isn't it? I know that one as well, but not as well as Elliot. <laughs> I do. I've known it for longer than him. Not as well <laughs> as Elliot, though. Elliot doesn't need. Well, so need... so this is different, right? So this is not. Components. Even though it says that you catch the main hand can trip, this is not a spell. This is part of his telekinesis, right? Mm. So this is literally him manipulating something with his mind, but we're using mage hand as what he's allowed to do with it. So what are you doing then, Elliot? I bow my head a little and, and raise my hand, and in my in my mind's eye, a silvery ghost attaches from my hand and floats over to the door, and you know, pulls the lock, pulls the handle. I don't know. I try to I try to push the door, but then I realize it's a pull, so I pull it instead. <laughs> okay, so the door opens. So again, so Daka. Oh, talking to Jim on Discord. Okay, so I'm wondering what the hell uh, uh, um, Daka's laughing at. So Daka, Flargo, Snarp, and Dimitrov, this is the first time you've seen this, right? The door just opens. I mean, you guys, your weapons, 
Daka, your crossbow while it's up, man, you take you take solid aim. Um, Dimitri of your axe is, is about to swing through because this door opened without any of you touching it. Mm. What? Incredible. How do you react to this? I'm very known and familiar with magic, and obviously I I know how to cast a spell like this, so I'm not the least bit surprised. Daka uh... just one looks around, going. Burr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give a stern glance to Daka, like, what the hell was that? Yeah, so, 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 Elliot, you've now, you've now uh, used this ability for the first time. Is this, what, what spurned you to try to do this? Well, I, I tried to uh, get the painting off the wall with a mage hand in the, um, in, in the manor house, uh, you know, a while back, but it's the first time I've used it in front of the others. Yeah, in retrospect, I probably should have given them some warning, but you know. I was trying to feel useful, you know, I, I was like, man, they're all, look at them all opening doors, here I am, sat in the corner, basically stood on by Elon, you know, I can, can barely move, get off me, Elon, I'm safe, I'm okay, and yeah, I, I thought I wanted to contribute to the group effort by opening the door. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound... <laughs> okay, so um, before you gentlemen, I'll, in here you see um, several beds, several makeshift beds, um... You know, this is obviously the sleeping quarters for someone. Um, it is, I don't want to say it's clean. I'm going to say that it's been lived in, right? It's not dusty. It's not, um, uh, you know, it's been cared for, kept. As far as cultists who are complete assholes would keep something, right? I mean, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not attended to by the maid. But uh, but it's obviously in in use. The blankets, even though there's a few tears in a few of them here and there, um, there are some chests, a couple of them opened. There are some flagons sitting down. You see um, you see some braziers that are currently unlit. There are some wooden plates gathered on the floor. Some empty bottles on the floor. I'm uninterested. I want to move on. Yeah, I mean we can search these later, but we just have to. We have to keep going, don't we? We have to press forward. Um, Dakar. So what's here. the plan then? So I guess um, I'll ready a shot and send uh, send Flagel forward again. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, we're, we're kind of we're kind of lighting. Maybe we should all just walk together now, right? Seeing as we're we're lighting um, pretty I'm much everything. To move now. first. Okay, okay, so you move forward, and you see opening to your right um, a large. It, it it opens into a larger room of one kind or another. Um, I'm gonna hold description. Um, I'm gonna say that you can't really see what's going on until you get in there a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that the floor kind of falls away ahead of you. Not like from like a destruction type point of view, but the floor just ends. Down to your left, there's a hallway um, uh, 10 feet wide that just extends further. And then at the end of that again is another doorway. I relay this information to Jimmy or Daka that it <laughs> the, the room to the room that seems to be ahead, like further into the cave. Um, I can't see clearly in what's going on in there, but I'm um, I'm hesitant to to enter there um, because like people could be hiding in there. Um, whereas the, the road leading sort of back the way we came from as a, as a room, I want to go in there first. Cause I think I can stealthily move in there into that hallway. Okay. How, how far away is the, is the door to like the South? Is, is um, there a door? Did you say down there? About 40 to 50 feet. He would, he would estimate. And there's no one in the passageway. Is the passage free? Not that I can see. Yeah, okay. you'd have well, to go I, around the corner to find I out. I can't see. Uh, I can't see like either way. So I don't. I wouldn't say that it's safe to come come forward. 
I'll go forward then and make sure it's safe for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so you move forward, and again, you see that doorway ahead of you. There's a, there's a large doorway spanning the entire thing. Mm -hmm. right. So, okay, so I'll I'll whisper to the guys. It looks like uh, looks like we you know we should move up behind Flagel. That's the opposite of what I said. <laughs> 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 I turn around, noticing that Daka is closing in with the other guys, like... <laughs> this, this is like the opposite of what I tried to relay to you. Flagel <laughs> says, and then Daka says, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Flagel, so what are you doing here then? I, I'm like a little bit uh, baffled, like at just how stupid like <laughs> and Dr. seems to be at times. Um, and <laughs> I'm a little bit like uh, feeling like I, I should probably continue co talking to or like communicating with Elliot in the future. Um, th this so might I, have been I don't know if I mistake. would necessarily describe him as stupid more than determined. <laughs> I, I really don't it's like it's like it's like a mixture of these things, right? That I'm that I'm perceiving because like there there's also this blankness, like when I'm trying to communicate with him like uh, telepathically, um, where I'm not getting any feedback, right? Um, and now he like obviously just did the exact opposite of what I tried to <laughs> try to tell him to. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> like is is he just like this? Uh, set in his ways or is he, is he like just a little bit too stupid at times uh, but yeah i i don't make any more of it right now uh but preparing to move forward here and uh try to see what's happening behind this beyond this door so when you say trying to see what's happening what are you are, what are you doing i'm li listening. I'm listening okay give me a perception now. check please No. <laughs> I hear nothing. <laughs> and you do. You hear literally nothing inside the room. No movement, no nothing. Okay. All right. That relaxes me a little bit, and uh, I'm ready to open the door. Well, you're, you're not opening the door, Dave Flagel. Um, no, I'm, re I'm, I'm ready to do it. Well, I haven't done it. Right, so, I mean, well, we, we've got Elliot now on the door, so before we go around the corner, I shall say, you know, very quietly, I shall say, Elliot, when we give you the, when we give you the signal, open the door with your mind again. Good nom. <laughs> I, I, will, I will do that, Daka. I'm, I'm sorry for giving <laughs> when, you a When we fight. tell you to open the door with your mind. <laughs> with your mind. <laughs> right, so let's go around down this corridor and... Uh, Get ready to, uh, I guess, Dimitrov and me as the as the two in danger. Oh, now all of a sudden, Doc has got some balls, huh? <laughs> it's got to be in it. I mean, bloody can't afford. We don't we don't, don't want Elon. To, I'd use Elon, but unfortunately, I think if he if he died, that'd be the end of so... Elliot. <laughs> Again, inside Elliot's mind, but no one else can see this, right? You see this silvery hand emerge from you, right? Is it a, is it a hand, Elliot, in your mind? Yeah, it's an image of his hand. You're, you're so, muted. But he's muted now. Oh, for flip's sake. Like a kind of a, you know, biomechanical kind of handy kind of thing, you know? It's a little, looks a little bit, you know, cyborgish kind of, you know? So just to be clear, it's not a squirrel hand. No, 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 no. It couldn't, couldn't be, don't, don't it exist, couldn't be could it, Jack Bull? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you don't know the anatomy of squirrels, Jack Bull. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so... you learn in preschool. Squirrels have no hands. So, so the door opens, and inside you see a circular chamber. Oh, man. And is a much, much better kept bed, right? It's, um, you see crates on the left. You see a steel cage an ugly burly steel cage with interior spikes on all of the walls and the ceiling though not the floor oh. right that's it you see two more chests sitting over here very strong lock boxes a lit brazier 
a uh, pile of wood sitting here. And here you see a rack of manacles. Now, I, there, there was no model for this, so I'm going to paint this for you. There's a dead individual hanging, right? His, he's, he's on his knees only because he's There's hanging from up. his arms. Um, and his chest is cut open from neck to the top of his belly. And all of his internal organs in that area, with the exception of his heart, are laid out on the floor before it. So where's the heart? Been consumed. Probably. Does he have any uh, ID on him? <laughs> He's got a wallet. <laughs> Check his credit card. So, we, uh, um, again, so if, if you were no, no, if you were to, so instead of does he have a wallet on him? I will. He if you were to guess honestly, Dimitri, of seeing um, seeing Jame and Thomas. This is probably one of their compatriots. Similar type robes, not exactly the same, not a uniform type thing, but, you know, commoner's robes, um, same rough age. Say, you know, you, if, if there's, is give, you know, you flip a coin, this is probably one of their buddies. So the blood is fresh. Oh, yeah, the blood's very fresh. All right, yeah, this is all. This is all. This happened within the last half hour, hour, forty-five minutes. I walk forward and start examining the body. Whoa. So it's literally another male human, and again, as I'd mentioned, you know, cut from the bottom of his throat, just just this this ragged, <laughs> ugly cut. With it must have been with some kind. Of, it wasn't chopped open, right? It was just cut open from top to bottom, and then everything was the rib cage is peeled open torn open you know as, as like pride if you will and everything is on the floor and the only thing that's missing that you can see is the heart wow. is the on the desk and yeah, like a paper so the desk has again some see. more of these documents with these different symbols on them um there are some documents that show um uh routes from full south you would guess that these are you know, here uh, rosters of items that may have been had. So that whatever they would have found on the individuals that they have waylaid, some of those mundane, very mundane documents, you could probably take them, take them back to Victa, and maybe their owner would like them because then they would know that okay, our this is what happened to our um, our individuals who headed south. But you also notice there's some very so Elliot, give me um, give me a perception check with advantage. So in this box right here, Elliot, there is there are about eight or nine bottles of some of the most expensive wine you've ever seen, and they are from Steelberries uh, specifically. Oh, interesting. Something, somewhere, somehow, Gnomish has made its way down here. Hmm. This makes me. They are really... in a crate, so you you would assume that they were either trade goods or something along that line. And there's a couple of empty bottles by the. Whoever occupies this likes the drink. This makes me concerned for some of the gnomish wine traders that I knew back in Stillbury. <laughs> Definitely. But these 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 wine bottles would fetch a pretty pretty penny outside of Steel. They're expensive in Steelberry. Just imagine if they could make their way to Full Point or areas beyond. You know, the farther away you go from the distillery, the more expensive they become because they are less um uh, less common. So, uh, how many wine bottles can I carry? <laughs> you could probably get a couple in your... Uh, depends. Do you want them safely, or are you just going to jam them into your pack? Well, um, I'll, 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 I'll jam them in, but I, you know, I, I beckon you this over and say, hey, you know, <laughs> uh, some pretty expensive wine here. We could leave it until we, you know, on the, on the way back out, though, yeah, is probably let's... the way to go. We, we, we can leave everything till the end, can't we? Let, let's save the Luton. There'll be time enough for Luton when the dealing's done. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough, right? There's, there's no need to loot yet. We need, you know, we can maybe, well, we can't save this guy who's dead, but maybe we could save somebody else or whatever, you know? Like, <laughs> you never know. This guy will be for half an hour too late. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you check his pulse flag? Or... 
Yeah. Did you want to question him and ask him why he's here? <laughs> I can't question him. I, I, am, I am getting more and more convinced that these guys are hiding something, that there's a reason that they've been taken. <laughs> this guy's an idiot. He's not answering any of my questions. Yeah, definitely. This guy's a fucking idiot. How do you All get right, yourself so what are you guys doing at this like point? This? So, um... You don't sense. I'll just I'll just kind of paint a little picture. Also, right, you don't sense any movement. You haven't heard any major sounds. Mm. Uh, the, the the individual who's gone, who who vacated the premises, no sign of him. Right, there were we'll we'll say there were some blood splatters here and there, but nothing that you could follow. Right, are they his? Are they somebody else's? You don't feel it's it's very strange, right? You don't feel you don't feel threatened right now. Mm. It's almost like there's a letdown. I always feel threatened. <laughs> I always feel that, let that, down. That's, that's fair. That's fair for <laughs> Flarvel, right? Because of his lifestyle. <laughs> right, we've got to go to this big room, I guess, here, whatever this is here. Okay, so before you move forward, Dadal, I'm, I'm sorry, Flargal, I'm assuming you're going to move ahead. Where would you give me a ping of where you would go so I can paint pictures for you here? Uh, behind this pillar. So peer, peeking into the room, uh, a, very, a very stealthy goblin. And then, if okay. I... So what you see, so in front of you, so you're peering around this column, right? And it, and it somewhat blocks your view a little bit. I mean, I'm not I'm not yeah, stupid yeah. enough to think that you're going to be staring at the column, right? But <laughs> there, there are different I'm lines done. of sight are blocked for you. Um, and what you can see ahead is you can see a large, it's, it's, it's angled, it's curved. It wraps the entire room. This is a, this is a ceremonial area of some kind. It does drop down and across, you can see several unlit braziers as well. All right. I want to make my way over here and bit behind this one and see if I can see anything more. Okay. Across from you. Right here, and then I'm going to ask you not to do anything. I'm going to give you this information. I'm sure you're going to relay it back. Across from you here is one of the biggest stone thrones you've ever seen, right? This thing's a beast. No yeah. humanoid, no no ogre would be able to fit in this stone throne, right? In front of this stone throne, give me one second here to pull it out. You see Molaram on his knees, facing the stone throne, right? And he is, he's chanting softly, soft enough that you really couldn't hear anything until you reach that first level of, um, of columns. As he's chanting, all of these braziers light in unison. So what are you at that point gonna? What's what 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 goes through? What tell me what you're doing thinking at this point? I'm thinking I want to take my uh, my crossbow and shoot him in the face, and then uh, <laughs> instantly cast like uh, um, the poison ball at him. Um, but I think better of it, and I uh, sneak back uh, out here. Um, to talk to the group and inform them of what I saw. And he has shown no no regard of you whatsoever, Dato. Yeah. I'm sorry, Flargal. He's shown no regard of you whatsoever. He didn't notice me because I'm uh, stuck as shit. A sneaky goblin. Um, so there were some braziers there, so could could... Could I see there's, him? There's a ca there's a chasm, so like we can't actually. I didn't see a way to make our way across the chasm. There must be another way uh, to to get to the other side. Um, I mean, we've got we've got two spellcasters and a crossbow, so we could. We, well, Dimitri, if you don't like ranged weapons, do you? I mean, and and he he didn't seem to like to. Uh, to get full, full, like you didn't seem to be fully affecting him the last combat, and uh, 
I mean, he got away when it was in our close quarters. Like, I think we I mean, we, we will just, not be able to bring him down from. We from can't this just range. let him carry on like you know doing whatever he's doing, though, can we? We've got to try. No, and but we, we got we got yeah we we got to try and make our way across. I think we like, can't just let him carry on. <laughs> yeah, we can't just let him carry on. No, I'm not saying there. leave the chambers. I'm saying like let's find the way across. We should confront him. Yeah. Oh yeah, do you want to parlay this time? <laughs> well, not parlay. Demand his surrender. Demand his surrender. Yeah, okay, that's better. Demand his surrender. There's one of him. There's f five of us. I like this idea better than the first one. <laughs> I am sighing heavily again at the uh, the naivety of uh, my party members. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the sigh, but uh, I decide now is not the time. Yeah, I'm not saying anything. I'm just... This is not what I wanted. And my body language is making that clear. Right. Who 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 wants to speak to him then? I mean, I'm a bit stupid, so it's probably best. Elliot or Dimitriov. Jimmy, I, I don't like when you refer to yourself as stupid. Sorry, it's Daka referring himself as stupid. It's not Jimmy. No, no, not Daka either. You're not stupid. Jimmy's... You're just not wizened. There's a difference. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Dimitriov. You're not you... learned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will you challenge? You're not a moron. <laughs> You're just not learned. I don't know. Intelligence here is pretty moronic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if an average peasant is 10, it is pretty fucking bad. <laughs> Do we actually know this guy's name? Did you ever tell us his name? Mola no, Ren. you don't. But that would... Okay. His... <laughs> yeah, but we, we, he's, we he's, know he's his probably name. not going to introduce himself just like you guys wouldn't introduce yourselves to him. Yeah, but if if I'm going to talk to Dimmy, I can't like Dimmy go and chat up Molaram, can I? I'd be like, yo, D Dimitriov, yo, get, go forward and challenge this uh, dark sorcerer. I don't mind if you refer to him as Molaram. It, it, it honestly, I mean, again, well, right? I mean, my immersion. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, did, did Indiana Jones know his name was Mola Ram? Actually, he never introduced himself. Do you know that? And he, and he referred to him specifically as that? Well, then, tell movie. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what is the plan, gentlemen? What are we doing, right? right. So, um, they, uh, Flargo Snarp describes, you know, again, he knows the headdress, right? I mean, this is the guy that almost kicked your guys' ass, was able to heal himself, and then disappeared. Right, I, I got... He's on his knees before this giant stone throne, right? This, I mean, this massive stone throne. Yeah, and he's chanting, and then these these monster. these five braziers lit all at once. Something's going on here. I don't yeah. quite understand the stone throne because it's clearly too large for all of them, and yet worms don't sit on thrones. Well, what if he's summoning like some worm-like god? <laughs> But if but it's worm-like, I don't it's know. It's a worm-like uh, god. Just not, anatomically, not... anatomically speaking, he's a worm your... man. Worm man, like like I earthworm Jim. Okay. <laughs> he's gonna summon I a think... giant earthworm Jim. <laughs> I think they're trying to uh, to uh, get in touch with the old gods. I found I, I... some information at the at the uh, mansion. Wait, wait, what? What? This is news again <laughs> with the secrecy from Flagel Star. Flagel's terrible. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> I'm telling you now. I mean, it might have been nice to know the old gods were involved before we came down here. It does change the landscape slightly. You, All right, so um, Elliot, you, give me, give me, no, no, uh, Elliot, give me a religion check. Wow. At advantage. Now this is different, Elliot. You already know you. You have heard of the old god. Oh, Jesus Christ. What a couple of rolls. <laughs> Thank God for advantage. So there's two. So you you went to two different schools in Steelbury and in, in Edenome, right? You went to the school of religious beliefs, thinking how to how the chief engineer interacts religiously. And then you went to the school of of mechanics, of um of logic and how uh, th there's a big dichotomy in the gnomish culture, right? You've got your religious faction. I don't, I don't, I hesitate to use the word faction because they are not at war amongst themselves, right? There's just, you've got the religious side and you've got the logical side. Everybody understands and knows within the gnomish culture that the chief engineer believes 
in engineering, in artisanry, in in uh, mechanics, so on and so forth. But the chief engineer also has a belief in how do we make, how do we get to an end? How do we get to a means to an end? And that there is a religious connotation to that that brings about the healing magics. And that the chief engineer has both sides and that two quote unquote sects have kind of formed as a result of that. The chief engineer kind of sits across all the top of this, right? So in, in your, your education, in both sides, you've heard of the old gods. Mm. It, it was not heavily covered because we are talking, when we talk about the old gods, we're talking about primordial old gods. We're talking about millennia ago old gods. We're talking about when, say, um, human culture here would have very, very, very first found the first artifacts that led them to believe that Cro-Magnon man ever existed and how little we actually knew about them, right? It's the same concept. The old gods, while there are some teachings and some trappings and some books written about them, it is all conjecture based on what different people have found, different gnomes have found. Um, there are some people who believe that the old gods predated everything and created the quote unquote, we'll just call it the earth because that's what we call it here, right? There are some people who believe that the old gods um, are still in command of things. There are some people who believe that the old gods are at war with the current. It just, everybody's written their, their little pieces on this, but there is no concise um, viewpoint on what or who the old gods are. In addition, there is very, very little as to any type of identification of who the old gods may be. Kind of think of it as like when we first discovered what we thought was a black hole out in the cosmos. And the only reason we realized that is because of the gravitational pull of other planets around it, right? We don't even know what a black hole looks like. But we know by the way that planets are moving from a gravitational standpoint and stars that there's something there. It's the same thing in religious and religion and logic in the gnomish, cult gnomish cultures. There was something there. Well... From a scientific perspective, I am almost minded to allow this uh, devil to complete his summoning ritual and uh, <laughs> meet one of these old gods. Uh, it would be a, you know, certainly a privileged position to hold amongst those alive. Surely nobody, nobody has uh, ever met them before. However, it also seems quite a calamitous event should it happen, and so I suggest we do our best to stop him. Yep. So, <laughs> so you just gave them both out. We should we should let it happen, but we should stop him. Well, I say I'd like it to happen. You know, part of me would like it to happen, but you know, I don't think we can. This guy's very much a bad dude, isn't he? You know, maybe if it was a nice guy, maybe he's trying to summon one. <laughs> maybe let them do it, but when it's yeah, a bad I mean, man, human sacrifice suggests yeah, you know, he's he's not, not good. He's not. A I mean, nice if, child. if there are multiple old gods, I'm I'm assuming he's not trying to attract the nice one of exactly. them either. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so shall we have Elon guarding Eliod, um, Dmitriov trying to brook his surrender, and... Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna, like, I think you guys uh, should be one here. Oh, hold on. Why is this not working? Hold, hold down, left click. Oh, left click. Yeah, mm -hmm. one guy here, one guy here, one guy here, one guy here. Yeah. I'll be here. And then I'm gonna walk out unarmed and confront him. Brilliant. So okay, don't whatever. don't move there yet. Don't move there yet. Here. Okay. So um, you can see there's light ahead. Are you are you extinguishing the torch? What's tell me what you're having Elon do specifically? Because it's very easy what the rest of the party's gonna do. Well, I included Elon in that. Like, uh... yeah, but is is his torch lit? I, I think so. Like, I don't see why, why we, like, I'm going to... Okay. No, no I'm problem. Gonna, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, my plan is to confront him and say... Yeah, so might as well leave the torch on if you're going to confront him. My That's plan fine. is to okay. not get killed. <laughs> yeah, just stand behind the pillar and then and then we'll see what he has to say. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. That, didn't whoa, whoa, whoa. that didn't happen. That didn't happen. I moved him first, in all fairness. <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> 
Right, I'll, I'll go here because I'm going to come out from. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I was thinking. Uh, wanna... Do you want me to move him? I'm, I'm fine no, with no. that. Yeah, yeah, next to Flagel. Like that one, yeah. So, and then I'm going to. I'm basically. My axe, which I normally have in my hand, I'm going to like put it in my back strap so I'm completely unarmed. Like, I want him to visibly see I'm unarmed, and I'm going to walk out behind the pillar. And, um. I, I am going to, as I glide across the room, I'm going to say, my name is Dimitriov. I am here for your, uh, I'm here to end this abomination that you're trying to summon. Um, what? What do you what what gives you the right to to try and murder all these people and kill all these bodies and mutilate these bodies? What what is it that you're after? Okay, so is that as far forward as you move? Uh, well, I don't really know where he is. I don't I don't see the throne, so I want to be. Like... There, can you see the light sources or no? Uh, no, I can't see anything. I, I can just see. Uh, I can, I can see, see the stone floor. I can't see any light, light sources. No. Interesting. You should be able to see them. Let me. Um. I'll. I'll. I'll send you what I can see. No, it's fine. Do you, so. Interesting. Yeah, I can see. Um, I'll show you. I, I'm gonna how is that? It. Does that make it brighter for you? Uh, I'll show you what I can see, and then you tell me what I should be seeing because. <laughs> This is what I can see. Um, I'd just like to say I'm going to prepare a shot so that, like if if Maul or Ram like you know casts a spell. Oh, hold on, hold on. Can you scroll up? I haven't scrolled up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just scrolled up. And was like, oh my god. Okay, no. So I'm going to walk. What is this red stuff, by the way? Is it okay, lava now stop. The... Okay, so stop. Well, so are you going? Are you going that far forward? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm okay, that's fine. I just want to, because I want to paint for you what you're seeing here. Yeah. So you, you glance down, right? Your, your, your eyes have to move down, right? Because you're, you're a trained soldier. And down here, it is a writhing mass of flesh and blood and tentacles. And it's just, there's no way that you, you, you can make out no discernible body parts or features, right? It's just this roiling, not boiling, but a lot of movement, almost like almost like the sea on a semi-calm day, but it's blood and it's it's flesh and it's, you know, uh, movement comes through and then kind of disappears again. It's just a constant, and there's no idea how deep it is as far as the blood. It goes down, the, the chasm extends down about 30 feet before the top of this. And the blood and the the light from these braziers, you can make it out, right? It is just this. I mean, I, you would have the amount of blood that it would take to fill that, let alone. It's just you. It's it's beyond. It's beyond your 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 comprehension as to what is 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 literally. You can't believe it's all this blood and flesh and movement, and not necessarily human flesh. Just just movement of of visceral everything. It's it's very very very. Disgusting. I mean, really disgusting looking. So I don't know if I'm seeing this correctly, but is he on the same like? like is he on the same level as us? Is this just like, yes? It is. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because it looks exactly. Like so this up, is right? the far side that extends down into the bottom. If you can see the shading at the bottom, your side obviously. If you were to look down, you would see the same as this far side. And you're on the edge of this precipice or balcony, whatever you want to call it. So, <clears throat> yeah, I just, I say, I am Dimitriov, and I am here to end this now. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So on that note, gentlemen, let's take our first break. Uh, we're about an hour and a half in. <laughs> I think this is a great spot to go get a cup, go, go use the restroom. And, uh, and see what happens when we return. Amazing, yep. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.